weather in Yorkshire this morning was pretty bad, but over here, as you can see, the pitch in perfect condition at Salford as Wigan run out. And what a match this is in prospect for the pitch in excellent condition. Well, David Watkins uh, isn't the only man who's made a comeback to Salford today because one of our cameramen, Nev Clark, actually played for Salford as well in the A-team back in 1960. And he was telling me before the match that he scored a dramatic try down in one of the corners of the pitch here. Salford, the Red Devils kick off, and I'm sure that Revenge David will be very much on their minds having been beaten by Wigan in the Lancashire Cup final. It certainly will. They are looking forward to today's game. I know that. They want to prove that they are good enough. I'm sure they are, and they have played quite well this season, uh, getting to the final of the Lancashire Cup, of course, and this game is eagerly awaited to show just how good they are. The official today, Steve Cross from Hull, using the whistle already. First penalty has gone to Wigan. It always seems strange to see Wigan playing in anything other than their cherry and white hoops. They're in blue and white today. And Steve Hamps pumping that one up very close to our commentary box here on the halfway line. Salford, there's a lot of hot air down on the pitch. And the referee already having words with loose forward Mark Horrow. And the Wigan roar goes up as here they come with Andy Gregory involved. Shelford, Gregory again there. And a good little reverse ball as well to Ian Lucas. It was a bit frenetic to say the least. That wasn't a good ball, but it's picked up now by Hanley. Dean Bell. Here's Kevin Iro, and he can't get away from the tackle. Actually, did very well there for Peter Williams to hold on to his man. Dermot along the line, Gregory misses out Hanley, that wasn't a good ball, but it's picked up by Steve Hampson, who will kick. And it's an angled uh, kick, and an awkward one, but well taken by Adrian Hadley, an exciting start from him. First time we've seen the Welsh international in action, and I've no doubt, David, you'll be very interested in the performance of Adrian Hadley. I will, because he was a good rugby union player, he's a big lad, he is rather quick as well, and that uh, helps immensely. Salford have been very impressed with him, and I suppose that's what really matters. Peter Brown boots that ball straight out of the ground. I know it's just come back in, but a uh, good kick from Peter Brown. He's here again now, with it in his hands. We saw Brown last week in the World Cup final, and that's another penalty, and a second one against Dennis Betts for speaking out of turn. Something I can never understand, it's happened in soccer over the years, but in rugby league, it wasn't one of the worst traits. No, it isn't, and uh, quite rightly saw the referee, he did... Uh... He knew what he did, uh, the referee did uh, penalise him, and it's all he's done is made Salford's goal-kicking task a little easier. But that was a lack of discipline, which Brown will hope to punish. Salford and to Peter Brown. Excellent kick from the New Zealander. Hanley, again, it wasn't a good pass, he had to turn around to take it. And as always, there are three men on Ellery Hanley. Just look at his brute strength, still managing to go forward, even with all those men hanging on. Dean Bell. in very quickly there in the 
to have a look at the tackling and make sure it was all right. Betts. Wigan have a big following here at Salford today, and Shelford has done well. Gregory, Hanley, they're steaming up here on the outside. Kevin Iroh back inside for Hampstead, supported him well. Gives it back to Tony Iroh. And Wigan, this is their strength, they keep the momentum of their attacks going. They get the ball away in the tackle. This is looking good here for Wigan. And the ball is snapped up for Salford. Well, it was looking good. Always fated to say something like that. And Ian Blees certainly served his side well then. He did. Salford's defence were uh, coping quite well with it, but the strength, obviously, of Iro when he came through then caused them great difficulties. But we're going to come here today showing, obviously, that they are back to their best and moving the ball about as often as they can. Safe catch from Hampson, straight upon him. Where Ian Bragger, the new signing, and for sure, and they've roughed him up too much there. And again, speaking out of turn, and Shaw and Hanley. I mean, a little bit of a, a do, a bit of a set two. Penalty for Wigan. to run it at the last moment there it was the valuable ploy that either and again Iro is there Kevin Iro this is back inside for his brother Tony really imaginative and good to see the two Iro brothers in harness as they were there and they've got such a good understanding as you would expect well Salford really needs some encouragement in this game they've come off much the poorer in recent meetings. <laughs> Wigan again rely on Brian Casey's strength to set them up. Andy Platt. Wigan really are in the mood, you can sense it up here. They really are, they're making the ground, uh, you can hear the people in the atmosphere, is incredibly. It sort of does remind you of those days back in the 70s, David, and there were huge crowds at the Willows, as there is a good one today. But Salford holding firm. Hanley might try and go himself, Ellery Hanley with that terrific strength of his, Shelford now, out on the wing is Tony Iro trying to plunge his way over on the fifth tackle. So Salford have held their line so far, and they've got the ball. That's the second time they've managed to do that. Well, that's really frantic defence by Salford, but uh, when you have a Wigan side playing on song as they are playing uh, uh, now, it makes life very difficult for any side, and Salford have been very fortunate to get away with it on a couple of times. Six more tackles because Wigan actually got a hand to that ball somewhere in the move. Well, it's a rough, tough game is rugby league these days. Penalty again. Penalty's gone to Wigan. Eleven minutes gone. Ten penalties awarded. Six of them to Sol uh, against Salford. So Wigan want to level things up. It's only about, it's just inside the 25. Bit of an angle. Eminently kickable. And he's fluffed it. Well, he'll be disappointed with that. He kicked nine successfully against Runcorn last week. Well, Wigan having to employ a new hooker with Martin Dermott off the field and Ian Potter on. It's Salford for the first time. That's a head tackle for which Dean Bell, or is it Steve Hampson, is going to get immediate retribution. 
is Dean Bell, who is going off for ten minutes. Certainly caught his man around the head. I can't say I'm surprised to see Bell going off. Well, most players remember their debuts, and Ian Bragger will certainly remember his debut for Salford. £20,000 signing from Keithley on Friday. He's already off the pitch as a result of this. Yes, uh, Salford trying to move the ball quickly. It's the first time they've really had any opportunity, and Bell went in, no intentions of going low then, and it did catch him high, and he's gone off. And as I said, uh, ten minutes, not enough, I don't think. It should be in a send-it off. The player drop is he's suffering as a result of it. Bragger bleeding from the mouth, and he has been replaced. So early disruption to both lineups. of Ian Bragger, which is a straight switch, but good running here from the Salford hooker, Ian Gormley, former witness man. It's the first time that Salford have had a chance really to pen Wigan back inside their own 25, as they do here through Ian Blees. Williams, Cairns now, Brown's coming storming forward, this is looking good for Salford, and they've been up here, and there really should be a try for the loose forward, Horrow! New Zealander Mark Horrow goes over for the first try of the game. His second try in only three games for Salford, so he's made an early impact. Well, it all started from an injustice to a Salford player. Well, Salford now moving the ball out quickly, catching Wigan, of course, down to 12 men and moving it wide, and this is a sensible thing to do. And moving it wide, leaves the defence stranded, Hansen's tackle couldn't hold him, a wonderful try. Not quite, but it's 6-0, and Salford have taken full toll of Wigan being depleted. Yes, they did. They moved the ball about well, and uh, that was important. Uh, a wise thing to do, because Wigan down to 12 men, having to reassemble. Watch how they move it now. They decide now they've got to move it out wide, and the ball goes along the field. And the Wigan defence already carried in, and look, even the cover defence can't get out as wide as the, as the attack is going. And just the dummy, Hampson's tackle couldn't hold him. Not enough people there. Good try. Gregory showed it, nearly gave it to Shelford, that was brilliant, but Hadley uncharacteristically puts it to ground. Well, Wigan are really making a show of it, because I would have thought one man down, they might have tightened up a little bit, they seem to be at six and sevens. Hanley's obviously had a word and maintains they've got to move the ball out wide, and using the eye of others, and my gosh, those two players really are taking on this Salford defence at every opportunity. Salford's turn to face the music. This a very straight kick for Kevin Iro. Oh, would you believe he's missed that one? Well, two out of two that he really should have kicked. Platt, Gregory, Shelford. The ball to Bell there has come back on almost unnoticed after his ten minutes out of the action. Potter's pass wasn't a good one to Hanley. <laughs> it's in up and under. Or an up and over, whichever way you look at it, I suppose. Gregory ducks and darts, and he gets towards that sort of try line. Last tackle again, though. Salford continuing to hold out as Hampson goes for the kick over the top. Tries to follow up his own kick, bravely taken by Horro. Well, we saw him touch down at the other end of the field. He touched down over his own line then, gratefully. Good old trouble playing the ball, mind you. Wigan, a pile driver coming in there, trying to get that ball back. Now 
well laid amassed dozens of points by this time last week at uh, Wigan. It's not often have to wait half an hour to get on the sheet. Oh, excellent relieving kick. That was a brilliant kick uh, by Peter Williams, and uh, that's one of his strengths. We've said about his kicking out of the hand, and that was a superb kick. That's really taken the pressure off this Salford defence. And he's settled to this game so well. Well, there's a marvellous crowd here, and so unusual, of course, at Salford, uh, that's behind the posts. That's good to see. What a perfect view they've got. Tackling excellent once more. Almost two or three of them there. Steve Herbert and Andy Gregory have got words to say to one another. And Shelford once more has a Andy Platt steaming away on his right. Andy Platt running like a three-quarter. And he can get up and still go on. And Tony Iro just couldn't get away. His ankle caught. Otherwise he had to be a scorer. The line would have been undefended. And Iro and Horro. Two New Zealanders, but they're also two professional rugby league players. They were having a bit of a go at one another. And Tony Iro, five yards out. Coming up towards half time, we could dearly need a try. Gregory gets the ball away, and it's Platt, two yards out. Platt probably deserved to score after the rampaging run he made. Gregory for Hanley, twists back inside. Hanley. Shows it, and there must be a try for Shelford. Well, Adrian Shelford is making a speciality of scoring against Salford. His only previous try in this country was in the Lancashire Cup final against the same opposition. And the right psychological time for Wigan to get on the sheet. Well, Salford have defended desperately, but uh, you can't defend desperately all the time against a side with so many star players. Hanley shakes off the tackler. Shelford up with him at his shoulder. He knows where he's going, and that's a good try. There you see the simplicity of the kick. And 6-6 six, six it is. Well, it might have gnawed away at his mind that he'd missed two, but if he'd have fluffed that one, I would have been astonished. That's right. I, I don't think he had any doubts where that was going to go. Salford can do before that, the last tackle. Browns, the ball out to Ken Jones as well, who drifts it back infield. And uh, Jones followed up as well to make the tackle on Wigan fullback Hampson. And that has to be a penalty against Jones. Hampson was merely preparing to play the ball. Yes, he went into the ball. It's always a difficult decision as a fullback to allow. Once you allow it to bounce, you leave yourself all kinds of problems. But he did recover well, and there's no doubt in Ken Jones committed an offence. What was interesting was that Wigan, who had the opportunity to kick the ball out, elected to run it. Very strange decision inside their own 25, so close to half time, and now they've conceded another penalty, which gives a much better chance for Brown to restore Salford's lead. already had two minutes of time added on in this first half. So Peter Brown. And this time he accepts the chance. Salford lead 8-6. So the second bite at the cherry paid off and the hooter has gone. And so before the start of the second half, there are three sporting personalities down on the touchline with Nick Powell. Well, two football men, John, but we'll start with Paul Allen, Lancashire Cricketer. Paul, enjoying it? Yes, great, isn't it? It's a great way to spend a, a very freezing afternoon. Marvellous entertainment. Are you finding out, though? No. 
No, I'd far rather face Mark Falcon Marshall than be out there. Uh, Neil Mitchell, you're very much uh, a Salford fan, aren't you? Oh, yes, I like my rugby league. I come every Sunday, I find it therapeutic, Salford or Swinton. Uh, I love the, the way they accept the referees' decisions and the tattles, yeah. John McGray enjoying it? Very much so. The only good thing about it, I'm sat in the stand. I wouldn't fancy playing out there. Even the mascot's bigger than some of the Preston North End players. <laughs> Well, let's very quickly have a projection from each of the three of you, John. I fancy Wigan. Neil? Uh, a few sore noses. I I'm going to tip Salford. Paul? Yeah, I fancy Salford as well, yeah. We shall be watching and waiting as we rejoin John Help. Thanks, Nick. Uh, well, we'll see the way those predictions go. It's Salford 8, Wigan 6 as we resume. And straight back to it with Peter Williams kicking downfield into the hands of Steve Hampson. His turn to kick, a very good angle kick as well, one which Gibson has to chase back for. It's aerial pick on at the moment. 4-1, Solvid taking the first half scrums. Perhaps not surprising in that Martin Dermott retired very early on, but not one against the head. Solford have conceded 11 penalties against Wigan's nine. But Wigan have made more errors. That's unusual. Eight to six. Hanley again finding Shelford. And Hanley and Shelford seem to have developed quite an understanding. Yes, they have. Uh, and uh, they're both strong runners. And when they do get the ball in good positions, they can break defences down. Well, Gregory really has got his kicking boots on. now he really goes motors this is speed acceleration taking just outside the tackle of Andy Gregory but Angry cuts him off and the pass inside was to no good effect and it, the, the chance was lost starting to now and uh, having the confidence we're going back to full strength and he's really knocking and running into people taking the defense on moving the ball nicely now inside for Hanley oh and Hanley shows his power and his strength and this is magnificent running from Ellery Hanley who's taken it to within 15 yards of the Salford line and that was the best we've seen of Hanley today quite well, magnificent well, we said he was fit and strong, and to uh, knock off three people who virtually have hold of him is incredible. Gregory shows it and doesn't give it, and now flings it out, and Kevin Iro on the burst will find Tony Iro for the corner, and a try. It's been threatening. Hanley made the initial inroads, and then when that ball was flung out, the Iros and Gregory were all involved. Tony Iro's over. His 12th try of the season. Wigan now have been under a lot of pressure in defence. Salford have taken the game to them, but they haven't. Look at the guy, he knocks three off, leaves them for dead, comes in, still can't hold him. Moving now, Gibson, he's drawing out on the outside. He's still able, even though he's tackled, to get rid of the ball. And that's the hallmark of a great player. And despite the fact he's being knocked in that tackle, they've really taken the game to Salford. And from that, it was inevitable, I suppose. They turned their advantage into points. They moved the ball out wide, a long pass by Andy Gregory. It's the Iro brothers who really finish it all off. For the 
first time in the match. Wigan look, have their noses in front. Kevin Iroh's record to date is one kick out of three. This is the most difficult one he's attempted. And he's fluffed that one as well, but it wasn't an easy kick. Wigan in front, 8-10. So now is the time for Salford to show their character. Yes, they know what they have to do. Uh, they always look dangerous when they're up there. They'll have to use Peter Williams out to keep them up, keep Wigan in their own half. Oh, Hadley's kick caught Kevin Iroh out there. He didn't show himself to be such a good soccer player as he is a rugby player. He's given Salford a chance, 10 yards from the Wigan line. They'll have the put in. out on the Salford side and Cairns and Shaw combine and Hadley Peter Williams is close to the line and he's still going there should surely be a try here for somebody Bentley oh and Jones is he in yes Ken Jones is awarded the try they were queuing up for that one and Ken Jones was given the try but now I think he's... Well, there's all sorts happening here now. Jones has taken the ball back, wanting to attempt a conversion. Yes, and it's... Uh, the try has been awarded, but Dean Bell has been in trouble once, and I think he's off now. I think he put a fist in after the try was scored. What happened was that Jones was tackled literally a couple of yards short, and then managed to haul himself forwards again. But Peter Williams, as you can see, was the player who'd been taken out by Bell. It really was. It was a, an instant again. He'd been warned once. He got away with the second time when he went rather high for Peter Williams once before. And of course, there was no telling the second time. The referee's been quite right and has sent him off. Paul Shaw has been a victim on a number of occasions of head tackles this season. And Williams just cannot stand and he's laid on the stretcher. And what a sad sight that is. It's a sad sight not only for himself, but for the game of rugby league. Well, it is, really. I mean, uh, there just isn't any need of it. Uh, we've all suffered as players, and it's a sad state of affairs when people have to go high. And I, I believe that, uh, rightly so, they should go for it. There should be no ten minutes in bin. In this instance, if it was Dean Bell, then he's done it a second time and got away with it. And it's Salford's number 15, David Major, will be the replacement for Peter Williams. So Peter Brown will attempt to improve that try by Ken Jones. From right out on that far touchline. But success or failure, Salford know they're back in front. They couldn't have hit back at a better time. Here's Brown's kick, hoists it high but didn't quite have the length. 12-10 it is, it's a cracker of a game for some of the right reasons and some of the wrong ones. Yes, it really is. Well, Salford have uh, taken the game to Wigan and uh, they've shown too they can move it and this is a well-drawn ball. Drawn the man, Peter Williams now sensing that there's a chance for him going, but what a lovely sidestep. He comes across, throws a long floating ball to Steve Gibson. Gibson likewise throws a floating ball, and Ken Jones, although he's knocked down by the tackle of Iro, still gets over for the try. What a lovely try. 20 minutes to go yet as well. And this is not one of those games where you say, well, the next try will sort it out. Either side's capable of scoring. Gregory's boot, which uh, relieves the pressure for Wigan. Good long kick and the ball's gone out. Yes, I think that's important now. They are down now in numbers to 12. Uh, they've got to keep the game in Salford's half. They can't afford for Salford to come up in their own half. And really, their only chance is now to use the kick as often as they can to take the pressure off themselves. And 
Major for Salford is the first man up there. This is Horro. Jones has taken on the kicking role from Williams. Williams having gone off, and how well he's done it. What a superb kick by Ken Jones. Isn't it amazing when you score a try and you get your nose in front, how much the confidence goes through the whole of the side. And Jones took that ball into the middle, kicked to the farthest touchline, where there's less number of people, and found a marvellous touch. Holy Andy Gregory will feed this garment. It correctly, but it looks as though it's come out for Salford. So one taken there by Ian Gormley, which is very important. And chances here, and Shaw's going to score for Salford. He took the pass and he dives over to the acclamation of the Salford fans. The little Australian sends them wild. And it's his first try for Salford. What a time to get it. Well, that was a wonderfully worked uh, try and uh, something that Salford deserved. That's, uh, following that superb kick to touch, it was a scrum. And again, it was Major who made the initial burst, sure at his elbow. Well, you see, watch this. So look what the defence is telling us now, because they haven't got the same number of people on the field. He runs straight. Now, Paul Shaw, like all good standoff halves, backs up his loose forward and has a clear-cut path to the line. And he's delighted to get over near the post, and he makes it count. Terrific chance here for Peter Brown to make it 18-10. He takes it, and Wigan now have to score twice. 18-10. See the loose forward taking the men on here. He knows that they're down in numbers. Slips a superb pass to Shaw, and Shaw goes over for what could be a crucial try. Well, Salford nosing in front. I'm sure their coach, Kevin Ashcroft, must be a very happy man down on that touchline. Well, Kevin, now, if the Reds stay sensible, it should be your match. Yeah, if they stay sensible, that's what they've got to do now. They've got to hold them out, that's all, and just play as we have been playing, and it should be no problem. Think we're going to do it? Yeah, well, knock on. Yeah, that, you know, I mean, the, the game plan's working well, and uh, they've just got to, you know, carry on doing what they're doing. Yeah, well, thanks very much indeed. John Jackson coming forward. Caught around the neck by Waddle. Hanley, oh, he saw the gap and went through it, and it's always oh, rocked off his heels there. Uh, the tackle from Brown. It's thunderous stuff, is this? Caps is there again. He's got one or two options as well. Shelford. Well, is it any wonder that people are turning up in their droves to watch rugby league when they get this quality of entertainment? Gregory back again, Hanley, almost intuitive that he's by his side. Last tackle, though. Wigan won't feel the drop goals are much good at uh, this stage, but Gregory's kick is a beauty. It's going to put Gibson under some pressure, and he'll be hauled back over his own try line, and he'll be a kick out under the post, so Salford will get the ball back, but the touch judges are both on the field. The Wigan man is lying prostrate. Keith Mills, the Wigan physiotherapist, is uh, on there administering the treatment. And the Salford hooker, Ian Gormley, is going off for ten minutes. There he goes. 
And that's a silly thing for Salford to do. The coach was talking about keeping their discipline and he's got to let them down. That's right, but look, uh, Andy now decides that uh, he's, uh, he's got to put the defence under pressure. He kicks and he goes following through and hits him above the shoulders again. And he's rightly dismissed from the field. And that's a silly thing to do because, because of that silly thing, it means that Salford are now down to 12 as well and uh, Wigan are on equal terms. But it's also had the double effect of uh, giving Wigan the opportunity to get two more points back towards Salford's score. A straightforward penalty for Kevin Iroh. Well, it's not his day at the moment. Well, there must be bitter disappointment on the Wigan bench for that. Possession from the scrum. That was uh, clever play. Tony Iro skips away from the tackle. Keeps going, Tony Iro, showing all his strength and resilience. But Burn is caught, pulled back. The game has been quite breathless. It's a really fiery encounter. Salford leading 18-10. Anything can happen, and coming up now is Platt and Hanley. He's not far from the line, and Hanley's over. Ellery Hanley equals Keith Fielding's record of 165 touchdowns in the first division, and what a time for him to do it. Well, he's the captain of the club, he leads by example. We've said he's a superstar. There's always anticipation when he's got the ball, and Wigan are determined now to make use of the ball as often as they possibly can. They've got to subject Salford to as much pressure as they can. It's a straight run by Pat, but look at this, Hanley coming off it. The crowd, no, he steps inside Gibson. His sheer strength of the guy takes him here in for the line. What a try at the right time. And two more points this time. Kevin Iro has got it right. And what a finish we've got in prospect now, because it's Salford 18, Wigan 16. Here they go again, moving the ball out wide. They know they've got to score tries now, it's important they do just that. Hanley collects the pass, steps inside Gibson, and captain as he is, leading from the front, scores a try at the right time. Potter finding Gregory. Always danger here, but the ball lost by Betts. And a penalty is given as well to Salford. Explanation and another yellow card is going to be shown here, and it's Andy Gregory. Literally seconds left. And Salford knock it forward. Major's got a chase on here. Tony Iroh did well to fall on it for Wigan, otherwise they would have been lost. And he's got the ball away. They're seeking to run it. Is there's one sting in the tail even yet? The backing up from Case. And it was Shelford who got his hands on the ball. We've had two minutes of injury time. Still Wigan coming looking despairingly for points. And you'll know when the hooter has gone because the red and white shirts will leap in the air if the scoreline remains the same. Potter, Shelford, he's got to give it now. Hampson's come up and tears through the middle. Kicks over the top, Betts, and he's taken out of the play. And the referee says no penalty. 
this has been a, a robustious match, to say the least, and it's still going as Hadley's taken out by Byrne. Another head tackle, and Byrne has been sent off. And that's not a ten-minute he's off. Too many head tackles in this game, I'm afraid. Well, this is a sensational, but that sensation is for the wrong reasons, and uh, Jed knows he's done it again. Stepping inside people, people still have the habit of going for the head. Hadley now picks up the ball, he's going to have a go. The defence is closing on him, so he steps back inside, and already there it goes. Perhaps not a vicious one, but nonetheless, it was one that really matters, and the referee, rightly so, sends him off. I said too many head tackles, uh, one is too many, there shouldn't be any in rugby league. It was the open hand at Port Hadley, so there, for the injury is uh, not a bad one. Hadley's able to continue. We've had four minutes of injury time. Been a lot of stoppages. But they've not detracted from the enjoyment factor of the game. As I said before, it's had a bit of everything as this one. Major. Surely that hooter can't be long delayed now. But can Salford get a final try? Waddle's looking for one. Sure. Skipping through the tackle. Sure. Still going. Yes, he's all right. And the chance here for Bentley. And there must be a final score for Ian Gormley. He's there. Gormley's over. It's victory for Salford now. Delight for Ian Gormley. Delight for the crowd. Despair for Wigan. And Salford have revenged that Lancashire Cup final defeat. Well, the Salford bench has gone mad with delight, and so they rightly should. But it was inevitable, I saw, as Wigan had put everything into attack despite their depleted numbers, and Salford maintained their form as well by moving the ball wide. Shaw coming into the game more now than he ever has done. Here they are, Waddle goes into the tackle, holds up the ball here. Shaw picks it up, sees his way blocked, runs round, pirouettes on one, gets the defence going, doesn't hold him down, gets back up, referee, move plays on, Bentley pushes him away, and he knows where he's going on. He's not going to give up the goal. Down it goes, left, fantastic try. So Ian Gordon is a hero for Salford, only minutes having been signalled. Brown's kick, it almost doesn't matter, but it's through the sticks anyway. Well, what a sensational win this is going to be in Salford. It's 24 points to 16. Gormley is ecstatic. The match is over. Wigan have been beaten. Well, you'd have thought they'd have won the cup. And Paul Shaw is very much a hero. He scored a try and he made the last one as well. 24-16, the final score then, Salford getting four tries to Wigan's three, but the result was always in doubt until that last-minute effort from Ian Gormley. Well, if David Watkins has managed to find his way through the crowd, he should by now be in the Salford dressing room with the man of the match. This is a trophy for the man of the match award, and I have pleasure today in giving the Stones Bitter Man of Match Award to Paul Shaw, the Salford halfback. Oh, yeah. Uh, you must have enjoyed it, and going on for the try made it even better. Yeah, it was uh, very uh, surprising that uh, the try was allowed, but uh, we were very glad because it is the first try of the school for Salford. So well, it was very good. Well. Like me, we're all working in harmony. 